Hello all. Hope you guys are doing pretty well. I am Rijit Mandel. I secured a All India rank of 1342 in NEET 2021 and also got 674 out of 720 in NEET. So, today we are going to be talking about biology. How to prepare biology for NEET being a state board student or any student who is struggling with biology or getting low marks in biology. So, uh, I find myself eligible to share my views on NEET biology because in this year NEET, I got 355 out of 360 in biology. I'll also be sharing why I wronged one question in biology. So, we are going to be dividing the whole video in three parts. First, we'll be talking about why biology is so important in NEET. We all know that it contains 50% of the marks in biology in NEET, but what else? What else makes it so important? Second, we'll be talking about how to read NCRT and how to practice, how to understand it and how to go through it properly. So, and the la later part, we'll be talking about some mind bogglers from NCRTs. Like, we believe they're not even present in NCRT, but they are still hidden in it. So, let's get into it. So, the first issue. Why biology is so important? It has 360 marks out of the whole 720 in NEET. But the thing is, most of the students uh, in... West Bengal, uh, we took PCMB very easily, but outside West Bengal, there is very a uh, common trend of picking up only one stream, either medical or engineering, from the uh, 11th standard itself. So, most of the students who write NEET exam are well developed in biology. They love biology and uh, they, are, they find it easy also. So, most of the people maybe even do wrong and maybe uh, are weak in physics especially or chemistry but they do pretty well in biology so the competition in biology is pretty high and much 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 higher than any other subjects in need i'll share my story that i secured 355 i just made one mistake in need but still my percentile is 99.4 which is less than physics and chemistry though i wronged many more in physics and chemistry but still my percentile is lower in biology that means around 0.6 percent of the lot scored more than me and what's more than me that is just 356 and 360 that means around 7 to 10 k of people like a huge amount of people scored 360 and 356 in need and that's really huge i mean uh, we do not think about it but uh, the main score gainer in need is uh, biology like physics gives you a pretty good rank in and gives you an edge over others but biology ha leads you to the same level of many others and m one more thing when two people get the same marks all together, the first tiebreaker is their biology marks. Like, I got 674, someone else got 674. They have, in 674 range, they have rank ranges from like 1380 to 1370 around. So, the, those who got the rank of 1318 must have secured 360 out of 360 in biology and for that reason my rank is a bit lower on the side so yeah and also you can see in the first phase also like there are AIR 5 to AIR 19 and all of them have scored 715 but still they have a rank difference why because it's biology that uh, the rank 19 holders wronged so, I hope you understand it as well, that why biology is so, so important, apart from the fact that it has the 50% of the weightage. So, let's get to the second part of the video. So, uh, 
let's get into it how to read NCERT first. So, uh, those students like me who are not from CBSC or any English medium boards are quite, you know, feel uncomfortable reading NCERTs. And mostly because other state boards will have like this volume, this much volume of for one class in our just state boards books. And we are given this two stream books for need. And first, we can't even believe that this short volume is sufficient for me. Like need is a grand exam and this much volume compared to this, it's not even like half of it. And it's it's just the half of the volume of the total 11th and 12th all together. So first believe yourself, believe all the people who are saying and said that enough. You can get it, but it's secondary. First NCR. So let's come to the point where we have to overcome the language barrier. Like us state board students who are not very used to studying English, we have a problem at first time to you know go through the text in English. Like I have one friend, uh, and she says like you know, her eyes hurt when she you know sees uh, that much of English on a page altogether at first sight. So it becomes difficult to uh, understand at first place uh, for our state board students, be it Bengali, be it Marathi, and uh, be it Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, whatever else. So I have a suggestion for all you guys, like pick a topic you are gonna read for the first time only. I'm not talking about revision at first place, I'm talking about the first time you are going through the text. So suppose you are reading DNA fingerprinting. Just you know the language well, you have e been used to read in the particular language for me as it is Bengali. So go through the text and don't overburden it, just read it like anything else, just a story I guess. Just go through it. You have now a quite an idea about what it is actually. Don't need to, you know, understand properly. But just go through the text in your comfortable language. And then come to your NCRTs. Like go through it to each and every line and try to understand it. Go to YouTube and search about the topic. But first get a suggestion of the topic, overview of the topic from the language you are comfortable enough and then come back to NCRT because English at first place to many students are a bit tough. So just now here come to DNA fingerprinting and start it line by line as stated in preceding section 99.9% and .9 stuff. Just go through it and understand it properly like what happens uh, about the DNA fingerprinting. After you get the hang of it, you know what it is. Go watch a video on YouTube because there's too much content available in, on YouTube right now or you do have your schools or whatever. You just get the concept and you have read the state board books or in the, the language comfortable you are and then the NCRT and then go to a lecture or anything, you have, any resource you do have to understand the topic more deeply and then come back to NCRT again and highlight the things you think you can forget. Don't need to make another copy or something but if you want to make some flowcharts or something that's on up to you. But NCRT itself is important. Okay. And then mark the things you can forget and read it like a kid. Like we teach a kid about like every line in the paragraph. You ha if you want to excel in need you have to read each and every line of the paragraph like a kid because you don't know in from which line NT can make a question for you and that can you know surprise you so be ready for that and read each and every line because every line has some key concepts that you can miss and you have to read between the lines also for some concept but don't overburden it if you have also read the skateboard book before and it will have much more content uh, in comparison to NCRT, but don't remember that. If you have both, uh, maybe you can remember some more things, but don't really overburden yourself. Read it, get the concepts, and then forget it. Just retain what you have read from NCRTs. And then I have a suggestion for it. After you have gone uh, through the state board books, NCRTs, concepts are clear, and everything, 
you can have a uh, question mark like mtg fingertips and uh, complete some mcqs on that particular topic or you can rather have on any app because it's available all through the internet maybe grade up or an academy or topper or anything else uh, where you can practice like 15 to 20 questions on that topic and that will give you some confidence after you have done that now it's a crucial thing which i have made a mistake about this before during my preparation so obviously get a pdf of the latest ncrt in your mobile or desktop like ncrt whichever edition you do have they may contain some abnormal normalities or some mistakes like i can mention you this particularly ncrt class 12 235 page here it says the human liver fluke bracket a, a nematode parasite so we all know liver fluke is a plaque helminth and nematode is a ast helminth so there is no way liver fluke can be a nematode parasite so it's actually written wrong in the my, in my edition of ncrt but when you go through the latest edition in your pdf format you will get the exact word that is you know rewritten in the latest ncrt and that is the trematode parasite so you can and in india can ask you a question like liver fluke is which kind of parasite if you have the old ncrt you may write it, it like nematode parasite and get a minus one as negative marking but if you have the latest version in your pdf at least you will get plus four and you will be happy with your you know uh, paper so obviously get a latest pdf version in your mobile so that you do not make any mistakes about the latest ncrt versions go through each and every word if there is any change so you you may also have a contrast you can see a contrast between your uh, hard copy of your ncrts and the soft copy you do have in your mobile so it's very crucial so you you must do it so he, here it goes the all you need to do about studying so you, you get the concepts you retain but you won't be able to retain for a long period like you read today the, suppose it's a very complex topic like uh, uh, human genome project you, it has so many numbers and uh, it's hard to name uh, hard to retain for a long period of time so you read it then the next day you read another topic and you have to give it one minute to you know recall it like after human genome project if you are reading like biotechnology just give it one minute to revise the things just after the day and continue it for like and shorten the span for a one week like for first day you give it one minute the next day you give it 30 seconds and all and you will get the thing more retained in your head and revise it after an interval of like 15 days or one month but the main thing to retain is to give questions like i would suggest that uh, group studies help in this format and I would uh, suggest you guys to not step out of your homes in the COVID situation and, and another thing is also when you gather for group studies, our friends get, you know, uh, some chit chatting happens and not that much fruitful it becomes uh, the group study. So I would suggest get a group of two or maybe maximum three of your close friends who are determined enough to crack need and get them on your call and then you know ask questions from each and every page get a page and ask questions from that page that that you have to get it get it as a challenge that ask your friend a question that he can't even answer and that way you, you will get more clarity of that page because in ncrt's each and every page is very important and uh, there is a, another option also I would such I can suggest that that's a very cool also. Uh, in an academy, there is an option to host quizzes. Like you can host a quiz and share the code with your friends, and all you can play uh, the quiz game and on certain topics, and you'll love it because it's also challenging. It's like a mock, but it's not mock. 
and in a very short time you can revise some topics and it's not for class members it, it's for free in an academy so I think it will also be helpful to retain concepts for long so uh, that's a very important thing to retain uh, the particular things and also check the diagrams very clearly get all the captions that there are and make it very clear that everything in NCRT not only the texts also the things that are written as captions or as labeling in a, in a diagram also read that because questions come from that part also and also I would suggest that many people get confused that whether they have to uh, study earthworm and frog well, it's not in the syllabus, but DCRM need 2021, there was a question from Arthman, though it was from section B, so it was not mandatory. But I'll say just don't, you, you don't have to overburden it, but you can go through it for once, Arthman 1 from Frog, and retain whatever you get retained for the first place. And also the author's uh, paragraph also, you just don't need to overburden it, just give it a reading for one time. And also one more thing. Like you have to read the summary also because there are lots of things that are from NCRTs but we think they are not in NCRT because they are not given in text but they are given in a summary. Let me give you an example like this one from uh, reproductive health chapter. Here we, we, we get the thing that what is an infertile couple like they are unable to produce children in spite of unprotected uh, sexual cohabitation but there is not mention of any kind of uh, period of time but in the summary section go through it the summary section they have written that inability to conceive or produce children even after two years of unprotected sexual cohabitation is called infertility so you get the information of two years only in the summary it's not given in the proper text itself so you get the idea how important it is to read the summaries also so get the hang of it and there are also some charts that are really really very very hard to retain like the chromosome number wala chart and the uh, 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 age limit wala chart just go through it once I would suggest because even if not it doesn't come in neat it will come in some part of the mocks and you will feel disheartened when you don't get the question and as it is from NCRT just uh, try as much as you can to remember the chromosome numbers and uh, one more thing that we have a confusion of that is the codons we don't want to remember this and it's not humanly possible also to remember all the 16 codons so you don't need to uh, remember the whole chart it's not really necessary you just need to remember this much because these are really important and this here also this is important because it's given in a uh, uh, you know uh, this is given in a diagram so you have to remember this which is written here and also in the uh, type of uh, you know uh, in the previous chapter it was also given about some codons so in the, like glutamic acid and valine in the sickle cell anemia portion so you have to remember that things you have to be very cautious about what you have to do I can suggest you you have to read every, each and everything just in the whole two NCRTs Mostly you can skip the part of codons because I don't think that's humanly possible to remember each and every codon. Even the numbers given in uh, the biodiversity uh, chapter is very hard. I know that it's very hard to remember all the numbers and uh, numericals things but you have to remember it. So it's the end of the part of the second that how we need to study biology to uh, you know retain it and to make it more comfortable enough and to score higher. NCRTs are like a maze. The more you read it, the more you discover its hidden truths. We read it many times but often we miss some detailing in uh, NCRTs and when they come in mocks or in NEAT we find like was it there in, in NCRTs? Let me get you some questions which you may think it is not from NCRT but they are from NCRTs. So get into it. First, I'll be telling the questions first. See if you can answer them on your own and then I'll tell you the answers at the last of this video. So, 
Can you name another family except Solanaceae that belongs to the order Polymonials? Can you tell me which protists are believed to be the primitive relatives of animals? Now, let's give you a fill in the blanks. You have to fill the blanks with prions and virions. So tell me. Dash are similar in size to viruses and dash are smaller in size to viruses. Tell me which animal can get an association with algae. Can you tell me the floral formula of Brassicaceae? Uh, which modification of asparagus stores food? Tell me, dash parenchyma stores tannins and dash parenchyma stores resins. Can you tell me, fat body is involved with which physiological process of cockroach? How many types of aquapurines are there in uh, living system? Apart from molybdenum, which other element is essential for nitrogen fixation. How many curvatures are there in clavicle? Can you tell me how many types of cells are there in olfactory lobe? And uh, uh, which hormone can also act as immunosuppressive agent? Which protein hormone interact with the intracellular messenger tell me how many ssdna are present in a mitochondria and uh, by which process zones of elongation are detected uh, can you tell me uh, which type of bacteria are most abundant in nature let's see if you can get those if you get it all correct, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I'll be telling the answers right now. So, first, the other family except Solanaceae that belongs to Polymonials is Chondrovolvulaceae. The most abundant type of bacteria is Heterotrophic. Protozoans are believed to be the primitive relatives of animals. Trions are similar to size to viruses and viroids are smaller in size to virus. Sloth bear has an association with algae. Root modification of asparagus stores food. The Brassicaceae full floral formula. We may think that uh, it's not in syllabus, but it is. It's given in NCRT. Xylem parenchyma stores tannin and phloem parenchyma stores resins. Fat body and uricose gland helps in excretion of cockroach. There are only single SSDNA present in mitochondria. There are eight kinds of microporins, uh, aquapurins. And clavicle has two curvatures. There are three types of cells in olfactory lobe. And cortisol helps as an immunosuppressive agent. Thyroxine is the only peptide hormone that interacts with intracellular messengers. And Fe, that's iron, also helps with molybdenum in nitrogen fixation. Uh, mm, so it was all in NCRTs just go check it there are so many hidden things in NCRT you may think they are not present so I'll give you a question uh, if you can get it do write it in the comment section at what percentage of alcohol yeast poison themselves to die do let me know in the comment section and I'll post more NCRT mind bogglers in the next video. If you like this video, please do like it, comment and share it with your friends. And if you like more content in your 
feed of YouTube, please do subscribe me. I'll be very happy to post more mind bogglers, more experience of my neat journey and my college days upcoming. So please do subscribe. Have a good day. Goodbye.